Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining the session. Hello, Royal. Hi, Atef. Hi, Neha. Hi, Simran. Hello, Ernesto. <laughs> Howdy. There's a lot of noise right here, so I do apologize. No worries, no worries. In fact, we are having some technical issues ourselves, so it's okay. <laughs> I have Abigail on the background who's going to um, put up the presentation because that was the glitch we were having. Um, she's going to be joining us in just another minute. In the meantime, I wanted to welcome all of you and just understand what do you want to take away from this session? You can uh, unmute yourself and talk. We are a very small group today. So no one has any expectations from this session today. That's interesting. You know, Simran, I think not with the expectations, just to uh, get your perspective, because you know, I've been doing real estate for the past 22 years, and I see that um, admins and like your position actually know more and know more about the ins and outs about real estate and the contracts and everything else. So you have a wealth of knowledge and just want to learn from what you have to offer. So you want to hear more. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. <laughs> I was hoping to make this very interactive with all of you because we are such a small group today. Uh, but I did put together a PowerPoint uh, presentation um, just to get you guys started into some kind of like um, aerial view of the arms that go with what all we take care of as an executive assistant, but also what all we can support the agent with. So these are things that the agent is already doing as an active agent, but we are being their extended arms, almost like an octopus and helping them with these tasks. Some of them are tasks, some of them are just literally stepping in and firefighting. Um, but that's what as an executive assistant, I feel sometimes I land up doing. So this PowerPoint presentation will kind of walk us through the aerial view of everything involved. And of course, you can always add uh, and edit things onto it as well. So moving on to the first screen where we cover like the overview of everything under the executive uh, uh, portfolio, so to say. Um, so the eight arms of the transaction as an executive assistant are, Abigail, can you share? Okay, there we go. She's, she's keeping up. So we cover transaction management, um, some marketing management, some administrative tasks, accounting, some software tools, hardware tools, vendor management, and a lot of office supplies and inventory. Um, so do you know what is transaction management? So someone can you know jump right in and help. So what I was thinking was by giving you this overview, we'll jump, dive into each one of these sections in the next screens. But if you think that you're ready for the dive in, we'll go right in. Abigail, let's go into the transaction management as the first screen. Under the transaction management, we cover disclosures, a lot of checklists, specific to the county that you are currently in. If your agent or you work in several counties, then yes, specific to those counties, make, create some checklists. These checklists will cover not only the escrow process that you typically have, but more focused on listing checklists and purchase checklists. Now their listing checklist and a purchase checklist could be just a teeny bit different from each other but to have them separate kind of allows you to focus on those tasks that are associated to a listing or a purchase. Does anyone have any questions at this time? Or we can move on to the next screen with some of the uh, uh, marketing management. Now, some of these will have to be created. I have a few that I work with. And if you have something, then we can cross learn from each other as well.
Okay, let's move on to the marketing management component of it. This is where our agents are typically promoting themselves. So a lot of this goes on, on to a calendar year. So if you have like 12 months of the year and you can plan ahead as to what materials will be going out on a monthly basis, you are setting yourself up for some kind of a drip system into your pipeline. The calendar year could start from whenever you are ready. It doesn't necessarily have to be from the January through December, but that's typically what we would like to see. So you can plot some events around specific months in certain times of the year. Use them as milestones to be able to leverage upon getting the word out there because we're not secret agents, right? We want to get the word out there. So this calendar year will allow you to plan ahead what materials you want to send to what farm, at what time and kind of plan backwards. For this, of course, you will coordinate with some vendor to help you with that kind of a, uh, you know, outgoing material. But some of these milestones could be some projects that you may plan and you could use some uh, amazing softwares like Asana, etc., to plan some of these projects. Of course, social media plays a big role in our lead generation as well. So if you are sending some material out as postcards, let's say on a direct mailer, you can also do the soft version on a social media marketing setup. Again, this also can be coordinated with the whole year. And all the lead generation that you have that comes through these can be tackled in a separate script as well as in a separate way uh, with ongoing handholding. Sometimes you find lead with just bogus emails or phone numbers. In that case, you might have to do one extra step of validating to have clean data. But social media has been exceptionally powerful in terms of getting the word out there, especially if the people who live in your farm are looking at you know, postcards, social media, then you have this presence in both of those areas. Any, any questions so far? Okay, moving to the next one. And of course, as an executive assistant, you are the extended hand. So you're handling a lot of the administrative piece as well. There are da daily emails that you look at with respect to what leads are coming through because they were forwarded to your email. Some escrow checklist tracking because you're currently in an escrow and you're tracking to see where in the escrow you are and sending those emails based on that checklist. Some sales monthly reporting as to what your target was for the year and where you stand currently. Some inventory reporting, what all is outside of your inventory right now out there in the market. It could be signage, it could be some uh, uh, equipment that's out in a listing, it could be some uh, things that you need to order ahead of time to have on your inventory to give away. Um, you know, obviously you also have to keep a log of all the reports and the username passwords logs, some code lists, and what all gifts you will plan ahead for what type of transaction. So if it's a listing versus a purchase, what will you give to your client? This is also opening up a window for a referral from this client at some point. So not only are you handhelding, but in this case, planning well ahead when, before I scroll even closes. Any questions so far? Or you know, wanna share something that happened with you that can enhance this area? Wow, this is a quiet group. Maybe we should crack some jokes also. Okay, let's go into the next area. So accounting is a big component of how we budget ourselves, whether it's the marketing material or it's the vendors or it's the gifts and everything around it. So under accounting, I went ahead and put some fixed and variable costs. Your fixed costs could be things like memberships, et cetera, and variables could be based on some work that you did at your listing or some gifts that you may have bought for certain type of buyers. And now you have more buyers than you planned for. Um, so obviously keeping a reservoir of your receipts, tracking some of these escrow reimbursements that you may have in the process. Some payable options that you can use now are things like PayPal or Zelle, in addition to just checks, and you know, check writing in general. Um, and also we have some deposit options now which can allow you for more um, efficiency. Um, that would be more like having your commissions wired out, 
or your mobile checks uh, deposited uh, via your phone. So accounting is one of those pieces that will fuel or grease all the other movements that you may have in, in specific to your type of business and the area that you're covering. No questions still? Okay, let's move to the next one. I would really like this section to be a more interactive section because it's got a lot of software tools that I typically bookmark so that I have easy access to them. Of course, the calendar is our critically most important tool. It helps you to plan ahead. It keeps you on track. Even the smallest thing, if you want to put in as a reminder, will keep you going through the day. And you want to be allocating, blocking, keeping that slots for certain tasks on a daily basis weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. So calendar is my biggest friend. In addition, you know, emails with respect to Outlook or Gmail, whatever you're using, has the option to flag some of those emails so you can follow up in a timely way. There's command that helps you with some, you know, setting up your day, so to say. It also gives you the option to uh, walk that client from one section to the other so as to keep them going on your opportunities. Um, no joy for keeping a lot of your templates in place. Asana for your projects. Um, the MLSREIL.com now has the option to even save your searches. So if you were specifically doing some research for a buyer, you can save that search, come back to it, tweak it, change the criteria, change on the maps, uh, reload on specifics now that you want, or even funnel in on certain criteria that will tighten that search for you. Um, and of course, car.org, oh my God, we can't do without this. Our forms are all here. And car actually recently went through an upgrade with their um, purchase contract, but they have all sorts of libraries at the back. You can access PRDS, uh, you know, the whole library, the car forms, all at a shift of a button. And now they're also integrated with DocuSign. So it goes from your forms directly to your DocuSign and out. So they have tried to make this even more efficient for us while we are working on these backend tools to help us through our day. And agents, when they ask for something specific, you can save all of that in the file, in car.org as a PDF as well. It's emailable, it's shareable, and it always drops a copy into your client's emails as well. Um, so moving on to, um, let's say, uh, you know, DocuSign itself. You can do DocuSign standalone also, uh, but I like the integrated version. And of course, Dropbox for your saving all of your files, whether you're downloading disclosures, keeping your clients' uh, files organized. And this itself is such a large aspect of our work that we I can do a separate session just on Dropbox by itself. Um, but obviously, we want to make, make sure that we are saving everything correctly, whether you do a CMA for a bio or a seller or you do a, um, a research of that neighborhood that they're looking for. Some information associated to what you're sharing with them. Keep all of that together in one place. So every time you go back to that folder, you know what all you've been doing with that specific bio or seller. Um, diving right into you know, what I call as a resource is uh, you know, even Google Docs and Google Drives. Um, that's an option for you to use if you are a Gmail uh, you know, proficient person. And last but not the least, saving all of these templates that you typically use in transactions in one folder dedicated as master templates, if I may say so, and can just pull from there and use for every transaction as a master copy. So just small, small things like that make your work easy, more efficient, um, less stressful, if I may say, and definitely time saving. So let's let's talk about this area and say that you know are all of these software tools actually helpful to many of you, or are you already using them? Wow. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take a pause here just to see if you're even listening. Any questions? Hey Simran, will you share this presentation at the end? Um, if that's what you want, and we're such a small group, sure, I will send it. Um, but I will bring it back to the main screen just so that you have the opportunity to look at the, the main uh, agenda one more time. So what I did is I made eight arms 
and I dived into each arm. I'm not quite finished, but just a few minutes later, I will open that up for Q&A for all of you. Okay, thank you. No problem. So going into the next screen, which is a hardware uh, related screen. So the hardware tools that we typically see and are very actively used in real estate are, you know, the desktop, the laptop, I've seen iPads, um, you know, the key piece is to keep them updated, especially when you get an update on them. And all these connecting devices, you know, to set them up correctly so they are not only synchronized with each other, which is so easy these days, especially with Apple products and at the same time have access to any piece on any of these gadgets. Um, I love the smartphone itself too, especially for on the go. Um, I do have a lot of these apps that I'm currently using to talk to you today also on my phone. And I can, you know, jump into a Zoom call when I'm driving or if I can make a quick stop, you know, by pulling myself into a curb or uh, a safe corner and then continue talking. Um, I like the fact that I can do backups with all of the hardware that I have. I think two copies is great, um, but if you can do three, that'll be awesome. Uh, but when I say backup, I'm talking about all of your transaction materials. I'm talking about things that you're doing for a client. Um, not only in an audit does the process of what you did with this client helps, but even the communication you've been having, like email communication that you can PDF and save into their folder so as to have for reference and as backup. Uh, many times I've seen that some of this material that you do save, simple things like a CMAU, even if you didn't get that home and you did some research around that, but you have it all for this bio, then you know that you've shown them like 10, 15 homes before they started becoming active with offers. Then you may have put like three offers and say three of them were rejected. Then even that material sits in the same uh, you know, bio folders. And then finally, they got into the fourth offer, let's say, and they got that home. Then that home's transaction can be a separate folder, but under the same buyer. And all of this can work, you know, seamlessly if your hardware tools, your software tools, and of course, your most dependable car is all in place. I have had situations where I have had to, on short notice, get up, pick up my laptop, take my phone, walk into... Uh, you know, uh, a property that I've never seen before because I was doing a quick showing for a uh, buyer who decided that they can see this place at short notice. And while driving to that location, I have already picked up my phone and called up the listing agent and, uh, you know, taken permission to go. Um, you know, 15, 20 minutes drive later, I'm at the location and the buyer wants more information on it. I can hotspot my phone onto the laptop and tether in and actually pull up the information of some realist reports or even some material that they specifically asked for. Sometimes it's as simple as looking at the county records for square footage uh, and matching that with what is on the MLS. And if those two have a discrepancy, then that's what my buyer was pointing out, let's say. Then I have that information handy and the tools that I can quickly use to get him his answers. Sometimes it's a simple thing like an HOA then I do have the ability to pull that information in as well. So, so my hardware tools, my software tools, and just me in general is like a moving office, if that's what works for some of us. But if you're more stationed, then you have the opportunity to build around some of these pieces and kind of enhance your proficiency. Moving on to the, uh, no, the, uh, the next screen. So this is the part that I wanted to open for all of you up for Q&A. I have been in the real estate uh, business for almost two decades and have seen some historical highs and lows. I'm happy to answer any question that you may have, but if I don't have an answer for you, I definitely have a resource that can, I can tag onto and get that answer for you. So I'm gonna request Abigail to go take me back to the very second screen of this presentation to bring it back to the main arm so that you have all those uh, categories lined up for you to ask your questions. So Abigail, take us back to the second screen. And the second screen is all about the eight arms of the executive assistant. These are the various aspects we just touched on individual slides uh, from here onwards. But this would help you to see what all areas we typically do cover for an agent. A good thing is I've been an agent 
an active agent myself out there in the market. So I do have a good handle of understanding of what's happening on both sides, whether it's the front end in the field or the back end at the executive assistant's office. So let's open the session up and here's your chance to ask as many questions. Go for it. No questions so far? Wow, I must be either very clear or, or I don't know what I'm doing here. Come on, at least at least let's creep in one or two. Or if there is a specific area that you wanna say deep dive into that maybe we can use as a reference or a feedback for the next round. A quick question here, uh, Simran. The Go transaction ahead. management, does that include uh, uh, actually transaction coordination as well functions or or you have a it transaction coordination? Okay. It does. So, and, and that's why I was focusing on the checklist that you have off of, which would give you the list of all the disclosures you must have in that transaction. Um, but transaction coordination by itself is a full-time job in itself. And depending on how many transactions you manage, some agents do it on their own while they actually can have the opportunity to outsource this piece. But if you have an executive assistant, then the whole focus goes into that the executive assistant can help you with your transaction coordination as well. Now, if your number of files are beyond a certain level and she quite can't do all of it, then you may consider having a outsourced or a dedicated transaction coordinator. But if it is in a certain limit and threshold point, then yes, transaction coordination is actually a very fun part of my profile. I love how I can make sure that I look at all the uh, you know disclosures that I need to have in that file and to ensure that they were all signed and then chase the missing ones so that I'm ready for my audit before we close, like at least a week before. And uh, just to make sure that my uh, agent is you know comfortable through this process, I fully manage that even with the escrow coordination piece in it. So transaction coordination with escrow coordination. So kind of hand holding it like behind the scenes, literally. Does that answer your question? So yes, very much so. Thank you so much. I would love to do more material focusing on that area. It will really help and give you more resources as well. Um, I just didn't have that much of time to do all of it today. And this, it's such a large area by itself that we can focus on that in another session altogether. But it's good to know that you were interested in that. Thank you. Any other questions I can take with respect to um, transaction management, some marketing management, any administrative tasks, accounting, software tools, hardware tools, some vendor management um, and inventory management in general? Another question on marketing management. Obviously the scope of marketing management is huge. So I'm not really sure right. exactly what would be expected. Uh, any any follow-up with clients, any uh, calling to leads, any, any, I mean, any kind of these functions expected of an executive assistant? So the marketing management component, you're right, is a very large uh, area itself. But if you have, if you as an agent are not able to consistently market yourself, then this nice part of your portfolio can easily be handed off to an executive assistant. And in this case, um, they can plot for you over the next 12 months what materials that you want out to your farm. They are the execution piece. That means you define what you would like to see going out for yourself. And then they will execute it. Now, you do have the opportunity to market yourself into different areas. Maybe you want to farm a certain neighborhood just with um, direct mailers. But another area, let's say, with some door knocking or another area with, let's say, just cold calling, you can do a mix and match and they all still come under the marketing management. But if you put this backwards onto a calendar, then now you know that in this week you're going to do cold calling or have cold calling done. Another week you'll be focusing on the direct mailers that will be going out to that farm or you'll be door knocking the week after. 
you could be focusing on the same farm for all these three tasks at different times or you could be also doing different things in different farms for whatever that farm is most uh, appropriate for now i had a conversation with ernesto one time and i know that he's quite the specialist to guide you into more details associated to door knocking in general so you know touch base with him too he is the hand holding person who can share some resources and some cool tricks and tips to get you started in that direction so under the marketing management get your executive assistant to help you with that consistency of reaching out to your farm whichever method you choose what's the cost involved so there are different costs in different areas um i actually attended one of these sessions where uh, a kw uh, agent shared that they could manage their marketing cost um with a simple flyer a physical simple flyer uh, that was printed out in their office and was actually distributed to their farm um while taking help with a uh, $10 an hour kind of uh, help um sometimes you can drop 100 flyers in an hour if the community is very tight knit and that kind of flyer distribution is literally door to door service so you're not mailing it out which is obviously the more expensive version um so this is the cheapest version that we've heard of so far and you have some of these task rabbits now that can also help you with some of this type of work in our office we actually have a vendor who allows uh himself to be uh, you know he gives his time ahead of time so if you need him for like week 3 of the month you can block him early on and have him help you with some flyer distribution um and you know what sometimes it's just for the steps like i've gone ahead and done the flyer drop myself sometimes uh if it's a small community of let's say 75 80 units it's a great way to catch my steps for the day and i will drop that flyer off in front of every single door it will take me an hour and a half at the most and i've used my walking time less talking time more thinking time and i've also caught my steps and sometimes i can be on the phone catching up talking to somebody uh, while i was doing a flyer drop so i've kind of learned how to multitask myself to get you know kill two birds with one and mission accomplished um yes it's on your time but if you have it now if you don't have the time get that help to happen even if you can't do it the idea of having this executive assistant in place is to offer you that consistency that we need in this process whether it's transaction management whether it's marketing management whether it's uh, administrative tasks all of that needs consistency and just an extra pair of eyes extra pair of hands in the picture so i'm highly recommending that go for it and if you can catch a lower cost start somewhere something small maybe with a smaller community possibly but get there get doing it any other questions uh one more question simran uh yes. an executive assistant versus a virtual assistant uh any any thoughts on the subject um it's a good question actually um our team has both um so the virtual assistant is more stationary can be outsourced um is not mobile so to say for you so they can definitely do things like transaction management administrative tasks um and some vendor management because they're communicating but the um executive that you have available to you who's a person who you know like is physically present they can handhold you a little differently in terms of uh, a combination of being more mobile so to say so between the two if i have to say if your team or your number of transaction allows for i would say have both the combination is mind blowing because the stationary uh, virtual assistant can help you with all those tasks that does not need the mobility but if your time is valuable and in our team I would like to see my key agents spend more time with the clients. So whatever else is on their plate, the agenda is that they as an executive assistant to take that off of their plate and to allow them to focus on what they're best at and you focus on what you're best at. That way there's a good allocation of the roles and everybody is productive. And of course communication is a key piece on all of this. 
Um, and you can use some great tools like even a <coughs> Slack to allow for that communication and that flow to be seamless between a virtual assistant, a real in-person kind of an assistant and the agent. Now it's a call that you have to take based on your team, but I think a virtual assistant to start with is a very good step going forward. Um, and at some point when your team is big enough to have an executive assistant who can be an in-person, um, I, since I'm physically present in the office, my agents can count on me on a daily basis to get some of their mobile tasks done too. Like, like they're showing a home in, let's say a certain area, but they can't drive up to another area very quickly. At that time, they do have the liberty to pick up the phone and say, um, you know, can you help me with this showing? And instead of one person showing three homes, we two people can show six homes. So we double ourselves out or rather clone ourselves out in that way as well. So both those areas are very lucrative and depending on your team and type, you can go into that area, but start with one at least at a time just to get you that consistency component out. Because real estate agents lack that piece a lot, that consistency part, and the VA will help you to get to that level. I've heard of agents who I spoke with several times who said that their production value went from 100% to 300% minimum with at least an executive assistant's help. And so this session was introduced knowing that it is definitely worth, um, you know, you're helping the economy of course, but you are also helping yourself. And what you help yourself with, because now that is something you don't have to do, is in that sense, very, very priceless, but tangible due to what you share with that VA or that executive assistant. So it's a very personal call, both are good, but depending on where you are in your team, get on with one at least at a time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So no one had any questions on accounting. I'm really surprised. Like no one worries about the money. I think we're making really good time and we have about another 10 minutes before we wrap this up. And we could wrap up earlier if you know nobody has any more questions, but I'm quite thrilled with the questions that were asked. Some of those questions are burning questions we have in our heads and just didn't have the opportunity to ask. Um, I hope I am answering questions to the best of my ability, but hopefully it takes care of what you're looking for in it as well. Still waiting. So I think if there's a little takeaway or a summary of what I was talking about here today, then I would think as a real estate agent, don't be a secret agent. Definitely get out there, you know, have yourself shown, seen, spoken about. Uh, people have short-term memory and you need to sit in there to get into their long-term memory. So there's some very interesting content out there that talks about, um, being in your farm more and how you can do that. So identify a farm that is very, has at least a 6% or higher turnover. And then when you do identify that type of a farm, um, get yourself out there in that farm or involve your farm with some events or activities so that the people and the neighbors in that area get to know you. That agent will thrive if you are more visible in that specific farm. And all the transaction management and the marketing management and all these executive related tasks will only kick in if you have that pipeline to be able to sustain that business. So keep your pipeline going, talk to people, interact with them. I mean, we are blessed with the fact that real estate has always been a very constant conversation piece apart from say stocks or any other subject. So leverage that, let people know you're a, an agent, let them know that you're happy to help them they're ready their friends their families uh you know their colleagues their neighbors get that word out there and soon you'll see that you will need a lot of help and help is here Thank you, Atef. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming, you know, joining us today on this session. It was the very first session 
Um, we're still trying to understand what all you want to understand and hear about, but we appreciate your feedback. Do share that with us. The chat will be open for the next few minutes and we're happy to take additional questions. Uh, I have also gone ahead and put on the last screen of this presentation, uh, my contact information, if you wanna reach out at a later point. Um, my name is Simran Raheja and my email is simran at allenwangrealty.com. Do reach out with any questions and what you wanna hear for the next round, but I wanna take this time to especially thank the uh, KW support team, as well as Stacy in my office to help us get this up and running and onto the show. Um, and thank you for all of you for joining in. Uh, we'll be open to more information, so keep it coming. And in the meantime, don't be a secret agent. Get out there, have fun too. Bye. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.